Hello everyone, my name is Altiwe Priyansha. I am an undergraduate student of Office Administration Education, Faculty of Economics, Universitas Negeri Jakarta. And I will tell you about a professional. So, what is the professional? Professional are doing their profession properly according to their applicable professional ethics. For example, is uh, like musician, footballers, teachers, and so on. And characteristic of a professional officer is first one is definitely most companies request their employee to dress according to some available provision. This is not because uh, the company is trying to push you into a uniform, but because management is trying to shape your personality. And the way you dress also reflect your work attitude. So, make sure you dress neatly and impressively. And second one is get straight to the point. In the professional life, people who don't talk often, delivering things effectively are more valued than other employees who talk a lot. And number three is be professional. You must be able to spare your personal and professional life. You must realize if he or she is a co-worker who becomes a friend. Keep your life as a professional as possible. Number four is focus on work at work. Try to avoid personal matters. Resize yourself from using social media at work. And the more you focus on work, the boss will receive you as a very dedicated person and will appreciate your professionalism. And fifth, easy to get along with to be a professional. Easy to get along with other co-workers is important that uh, can make the other employees friendly to you. And six, study hard. Professionalism can only be uh, achieved by people who never stop learning. Be open to new types of experience and lessons. And the last but not less is work systematically being organized in performing daily tasks is one of the key to becoming a professional don't let senior or boss remind you of the work to be provided working regularly can make the job done easily and without a hitch Hello everyone, how are you? Hope you are fine. Introducing my name is Rosalina Ramadiniasti. I am a student from the Baker of Office Administration, Facultas of Economics, Universitas Nanti Jakarta. And I am from Group 2, who will present a word managing your career. Thank you. So, oh, what is the career? Managing a career by establishing goals and objective is understood. The mindset is clear what strategies are proven to be the most effective in achieving 
the select goals and objective is there one hand that is all or rather precious added to the process that produce result is based on the equivalence of edge I believe that it is the latter then this particular to default a career management management strategy which in turn will increase job security why is this important managing a career is used to be a job for internal human records yeah? professional not anymore now it is up to the individual to take charge of their career systematic evolution of progress toward the achievements of select goals or objectives and modification of strategies is now more than ever in the head of two individuals. However, too many executives are in pressure to manage their career and uh, don't even know where to start. Assume and a good head turner are all you need to manage your career. Or a career coach will refresh your resume, resume and then give you the job you want like other pizza, boots, phone caps, or valises, and just visual thinking by people who don't want to do the nature's hair work as an executive share consultant and executive touch for over 17 years I, I feel like a hundred of a level candidates with need say first hand how skillful people manage the career and could get control people who have like real leader the potential unfortunately I also their story visually and with beautiful wild dreams with that potential and group bread career your career does best have to end like this consider and agree this four things to effectively manage your career. 1. Self-assessment There are numerous psychometric self-assessment tools like measures big that you can use to get a better grip on how you think and the preference that you have check this out and take the ritual with a cry of salt don't believe you left everything the side but consider that most of the feedback is probably probably right one if you like hair is only to one that can take for free. Two, carry cuts. Edit and here a carry cut. A good cut can help you every step of the way and mentor you to such pain on the you like and is education in the discipline, not just a new one of the street usually coach belongs belong to one or more global organization 
for example the international coach federating federating and the international coach coach how however the individuals personal details are the most important thing to consider Draft your summary out cheap. Arme with your sketch facade and achievement. You are ready to prepare your resume and level your profile. Better often sketch over time to potential new employers. Arme with your work history. Education and now what search factor you employ time and time again to sketch to coach you are ready to create your career marketing to the resume or GP or let's update your social media can channels. There was a time time when your work and private life was a mystery. That is no longer longer the case. We are all pretty much an open box. Keep you linked Facebook and other social media channel update and be careful what you say or it's called come back to home you hello my name is alicia luciana i'm an undergraduate student of office administration education faculty of economics universitas negeri jakarta manage your professional brand distinguish yourself from other and look for opportunities to increase your social and emotional intelligence. Commit to excellence and be humble in the face of failure. Authenticity and the ability to listen to understand and empathize with others makes you stand out as a leader, team player, and a professional. According to Daniel Goleman, award-winning author and international speaker on emotional and social intelligence he said we are ready to connect connect with others in a way that make you stand out next trust your intuition now when it's time to make a career transition and find the course to move on. There are usually plenty of signs the signal is time for a change. Look first at your own workplace behaviors. Do you notice a decrease in your motivation or productivity at work? Do you use work time to take care of personal matters? Do you feel less satisfied overall? Are you daydreaming about a new job or your next vacation? If so, begin to plan for your career transition. Do your research, know the market and how you add value. Focus your career direction. Review your development plan to be sure that you have the skill, experience, and credentials you need to be successful. If not invest in yourself before you begin your search recognize the current transition take me take time and energy consider whether or not the timing is right for a change if you are struggling in other areas of your life you may need to focus on this challenge first reach out the uh, career coach or counselor to help you plan for and manage your career transition. Next, plan financially for life and career transition. 
career planning and financial planning go hand in hand. Preparation is the key to success, my son Clarice. But without financial resource, it is very difficult to plan for an execute a life for a for career change. Research suggests that younger generation of workers are saving less than their parents and grandparents did, are struggling to manage insurmountable debt, and are often living paycheck to paycheck. Consider how long you could afford to be unemployed. Creating a budget, paying down debt, boarding an emergency saving fund, and delaying the impulse to buy things you don't need are common sense strategies to lead to financial independence. Live life by your design. Be proactive about managing your career. Anticipate and plan for inevitable career and life changes and seek out help when needed to stay on track. Hello everyone, it, it's so see you good out here. Let me introduce you myself. My name is Emel Fendari. I am undergrad student of Office Administration Education, Faculty of Economic, Universitas Negeri Jakarta. And now I want to tell you about managing your career. And this is the first preposition. The first job opportunity that can be done by Office Administration graduates is to become a receptionist. Uh, actually, for those of you who have good communication skills, you can be a hotel receptionist, company, and other because every company in in any field will give you a receptionist position to be part of their company's foreign office. The salary of receptionist itself actually depends on where you work but usually range from 1 to 3 million. And number 2 is secretary. The next job or prospect that can be done by the office administration department is to become a secretary. The main task of a secretary is to filter information uh, relied to the company, business for the leadership, as well to record, store, and remind the activity of superiors in the company. For the salary itself, we go back to where you work, but the salary is experimentally to uh, to three million. And number three is administrative staff to next job. Opportunity that you can do as office administration graduate is to become an administrative staff. The main task of administrative staff is to perform use office service like to administrate to support the small operation of the company for the salary itself which is almost the same as the job principally mentioned which is around 2 to 3 million and number 4 is SMK teacher it is now that uh, SMK or vocational high school there will usually be an office administration department the office administration department is also currently one of the majors often at the vocational level. So there will be a lot of vocational teacher needs for the department who have competence in the file of office administration. US graduates of office administration can become a professional teacher for his own salary range from 1 to 3 million and number 5 is assistant
assistant secretary for the next office administration job. Opportunity or prospect is to become an assistant secretary. Not only can you become a secretary, you can also become an assistant secretary. As an assistant secretary, you will have the task of reviving various phone calls and meeting management, schedule and arrange meeting, conference, and travel booking for office staff. Uh, for his own salary range from 1 to 2 million. And number 6 is personal staff. The next job opportunity that you can do as an office administration graduate is to become a personal staff. The position of personal staff is different from HRD. Personal staff are more in change and are responsible for things such as employ, tablets, payroll, or other payments. Uh, the personal staff is also take with managing matters such as apply attendance, apply loans, or recording each employ manual leave for the profession as a personal staff the salary range from 2 to 5 million and the next is event organizer the next job opportunity that you can do as an office administration graduate is to become an event organizer currently the event industry is growing rapidly along with the entertainment means of the urban community that can be seen from the number of events or activities held in various locations almost every weekend and the next is SVB chain operations one type of event that is quite a lot hard every weekend is expedition events we discuss show within first fashion exhibition or other exhibition as an office administration graduate. Mm, the next job opportunity you can do is to become an exhibition operational staff. Where do you work to maintain the smooth running of the event or exhibition? For the salary itself, depending on the event holder, will provide a fee to you. And the next is personal assistant. The next job prospect that can be done by office administration a graduate is a personal assistant. Personal assistant services are needed by important people are who have a high level of activity people who need a personal assistant to help with their work or activity as a personal assistant you will follow up the person activity and help with everything the need uh, for his own salary which range from one to three million and next is mass relation section the next job opportunity that can be done by office mm, administration is as mass relation section this job will make you work to bright communication between the company where you work with the outside world for this profession, salary range from 2 to 3 million. And thank you very much. This is his prospect managing career. Thank you for attention. My name is Safa Putri Nur Fitrialin. I'm an undergraduate student of Office Administration Education, Faculty of Economics, Universitas Negeri Jakarta. 
the purpose of my presentation today is to explain about the challenge in career. After college, most of us will choose to work. Whatever job you will choose later, of course you will find a challenge. Of course, the challenges are will face later at work are different from the challenges you face in the college now. I know the challenges you are face in the college are quite heavy, ranging from a lot of assignments, presentations, group assignments, and others. But the challenges in the world of work will be even more difficult. First of all, I will explain what are the challenge in a career. I'll continue by how to deal with them, and to finish, I will explain the conclusion. Did you know that there are many challenges that you will face in your career? Today, I will discuss just a few. First, able to work in a team. In the world of work, of course, you cannot work alone. Sometimes, we need to work as a team with people with different characters and this can be a challenge because we must be able, able to adapt to each, uh, to each character uh, of our co-workers the, so that the teamwork can run well. In working with a team, there are several things that become obstacles, namely lack of uh, responsibility, no commitment, uh, fair and fear of conflict. Things like that will be challenge for you. The second is must deal with deadlines. Work deadlines will actually be a good thing for work and provide positive benefit for, for personal development. With deadlines, we can measure how much responsibility for a job that is down. Deadline also have uh, another benefit, namely the work is more effective and complete quickly. With a deadline, you don't waste a lot of time on necessary work. You can focus on completing completing the work that has been determined by the target. The number three is can you just between mood and work? Doing work when in a bad mood is the one talks challenges to get used to. Because in our work, we must be professional, do not let a bad mood interfere concentration and focus at work. So we need to make peace with the situation so that the work does not fall apart. Imagine if you're having a problem with your family or your partner or your friends, but you still have to work professionally. Do you think it's possible? Number four is have public speaking skill. Public speaking is the ability to speak in front of, of many people and influence them with your ideas. From some people, being able to speak in public is scary things. This can happen to anyone whenever they are still in school, in college, or while ready to working and having a family. In fact, public speaking is the very important and necessary. For example, to increase self-confidence that you can easy to get along with many people, have the ability to lead more critical thinking and can be trusted to represent an event. Next, I want to explain about how to deal with the challenge. First, to able to the work in a team, build, char build characteristic of effective teamwork by regular meeting or discussion. Second, create team commitment so team members will try to carry out their duties to maximum to the maximum in order to achieve common goals. And the last, execute execute accountability within the team. Accountability show the team member respect to each other, high expectation of the of the one another performance. The second is how must deal with the deadlines. Start by grouping tasks to help them easier to do. You can categorize the tasks according to the level of difficult of predetermined deadline. That way you have priority to do which tasks will be done first. Next, try to stay focused on doing the tasks so that one by one work can complete on time. And also agile at the work. Agile at the work must often be done when you get that when you get a deadline. As soon as you are not afraid, 
at the work lead time limit, then you must immediately do your work. Number three is how can adjust between mode and work. When you are in a bad mode but you still have to work, you can do things like take a deep breath because deep breathing has a calming effect and allowing you to be in a more calm and conducive calm and a conducive emotional state. Next, listen to something uplifting and give yourself a small appreciate is a way to motivating yourself to keep going and if productive on the bad day. Number four is how can you have public speaking skill? To be able to hone your public speaking skill, you can use the following tips. First, have a clear message. Arranging the point of the material you want to convey is a right way to improve your public speaking skill. No need to memorize every sentence, but explain the outline and sequence of the material clearly so that it's easy to understand. Second, understand the audience. Adjust the style of language with the audience when speaking because each, because each of the same material must be tried in the different, uh, in the different way if the audience have different background. As a public speaker, there is a way to improve your public speaking skill. Make sure, to, uh, make sure to always start by understanding your audience before speaking in front of a large crowd. Number 3 is pay attention to body language. Body language such as a movement and expression must be in line with the material presented. Not only word that audience receive, but pay attention to body language must also be done. Because the audience will always be comfortable if your delivery is in, our, is in harmony with the body movement. Start practicing public speaking in a relaxed manner and not stiff when speaking, when speaking in public. And now I will explain the last part of my presentation which is, is the conclusion. In your career, of course you will find many challenges and what do you need to do is face them, solve them and not give up on those challenges. Life is about accepting challenges along the way, choosing to keep moving forward and enjoying the journey. I think my presentation today is enough. Thank you for paying attention to my explanation. See you next time. Do what you're passionate about and you'll never work a day in your life, right? I remember early on attending a professional development session with a woman who was considered one of the biggest names in my field, a very successful author. She told a story of a client with whom she had worked who was really difficult simply because she didn't have any clearly articulated passions. Finally, one day in desperation, the counselor said to her, give me a sense of something you're interested in, anything at all. The woman kind of shrugged somewhat sheepishly and said, well, I've always been kind of interested in gorillas. <laughs> Triumphant, the counselor announced that she had gone on to work for a local zoo, and voila, problem solved, passion wins. Now at the time, I was working with business students who, generally speaking, were not interested in gorillas. In fact, I found that the dirty little secret of most MBAs was that they had gone back to school because they didn't like their first jobs out of college. And they were looking for a socially acceptable way of hitting the restart button. If I suggested to them that they should find their passion, they would respond that they were tens of thousands of dollars in debt, and that while they were interested in finding a good professional fit, they were primarily interested in generating a paycheck. Now, over the last 10 or 15 years, there's actually been quite a bit of pushback around the idea of passion dictating career decisions. And there's a couple of reasons for why this is. One is that most people have no earthly idea what their passions are. But another reason for this pushback comes from fear of the fourth industrial revolution. What difference does it make if we're passionate about something if artificial intelligence is gonna take away all the jobs? Even those who embrace our robot overlords will admit that no one really knows what the jobs are gonna be 20, 10, even five years down the road. So how do we help people navigate career decisions in this new world order? 
One potential framework that has emerged from this conversation comes actually from the field of design. The design thinking process holds that designers work with clients to really get to know them well, understand their problems, help define them. They work with them to brainstorm possible ideas and prototypes, and then test out possible solutions. Those who are proponents of applying design thinking to career decision making holds that people who are working today will need to go through a lot of different iterations for the jobs that they do. They might have to try on many different selves and avoid prematurely foreclosing on any one area. The problem with that is that most people don't have the self-awareness to do that well. Most people don't take the time to figure out who they are before making a decision about what they want to be. Now, if there's one thing that we have learned from the fields of behavioral economics and psychology in recent years is that we as humans are not nearly as rational as we thought we were. For example, we are predisposed to make bad financial decisions, like spending too much money today and not saving enough for our future selves to enjoy retirement. I suggest that we are just as irrational about making career decisions. Let me give you an example. A number of years ago, I was working with a law student she came into my office very upset. She had just received her grades for the year and realized that she had done so poorly that she was going to be locked out of the jobs that would pay her the kind of salary that was going to be necessary to pay back her considerable law school loans. As she sat there sobbing in my office, she admitted that she simply did not like the study of law. So I said to her, well, what made you decide to go to law school? Because I didn't want to go to medical school. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I submit to you that most people do not make career decisions rationally, but rather based on deeply held, often unconscious biases that they receive from their social surround. They're highly influenced by their parents, their peers, their local communities. And they internalize a lot of these biases that they see around them, and they tend to then follow others into things that they have done as well. They also tend to internalize messages that they are receiving from their local and national cultures, particularly around personal identities like gender, race, religion, or socioeconomic status, and will tend to either embrace or foreclose on options accordingly, particularly if they anticipate barriers for success. And let's acknowledge that a lot of people do face barriers to success, uh, particularly along the lines of gender, race, religion, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation. But this is exactly why I think self-awareness is so important. Because not only can it help us not internalize these biases that are coming from culture, but also help keep us from making false assumptions about others when it comes time for us to do the hiring. What is tricky is that each of us as individuals will internalize and make decisions upon a lot of these unconscious as well as conscious personal identities at different times throughout our lives. And this is going to be constantly in flux. For those of you who are more quantitatively oriented, allow me to present this as an equation. With career identity being the sum of every possible identity you could have, all influencing you in different ways in different periods of time, a lot of it unconscious. But I will admit this is not my favorite analogy. I tend to think of all of those individual variables, all of those identities coming together as not an equation, but as a script, a deeply personal life and career narrative that tells the story of who we are and guides our decisions. This is why in the fourth industrial revolution, we cannot program computers to make career decisions for us. A script is deeply personal, but we also must learn not to just follow it to the letter. We must learn to understand it and question it. Your script is iterative. And like any writing process, it's likely to be messy. I urge you to embrace that messiness. Own your story and don't let others write it for you. And know that this process has always been messy. If one of my identities is former runner, another of my identities is liberal arts college graduate. And as such, I cannot end a presentation without including a quote from a dead white guy. <laughs> so I offer you this from Cicero to underscore that throughout time, this is the most difficult problem in the world.
Thank you very much.